Well, we were looking for a few things today, uh, playing against Davis and Elkins. Uh, we wanted to prepare better than we have uh, last week going into our, our close scrimmage against Cleveland State. And we wanted to, secondly, we wanted to compete. Uh, I didn't think we competed real well the last time we played uh, against another opponent. And I wanted to be more physical at both ends of the floor, execute better at both ends of the floor, and take care of the ball. I thought we did did a better job in those categories. But honestly, I told the team that we I wanted to be better than the last time out when we played another opponent. Uh, we played uh, did not play well and got outplayed when we played another opponent. And then we came back and we held another uh, scrimmage because I wasn't happy with where we were. And then something clicked in the last couple of days and we had been getting the effort that we wanted to uh, with, with this team, no matter who was out on the floor. And that's what we we're looking for uh, first and foremost. But I thought we got that effort today. And uh, yet yeah, Davis and Elkins came in really prepared. This was a tough prep uh, because they have shown full court pressing, falling back into his own. They've shown uh, delay game, they've shown um, half court man switching a lot and uh, hard hedging, uh, which is difficult for us to, to read right now. And I thought our kids really did a good job of getting out and running, especially in the first half. But when Davis and Elkin switched to his own, uh, I thought we really had to do a good job of executing. And we didn't open up real well in the second half with executing. And then finally, we're able to move the ball around. But credit Davis and Elkins for really controlling a lot of the tempo, especially in the, in the second half. But that's, that's a team that's going to make some noise in their conference. Uh, they're with all some, all some Broadhouse and Cedarville and Kentucky Wesleyan. and. Uh, they've had two uh, non or two scrimmages, exhibition games, excuse me, the, this week. So they've been traveling a lot, and um, just appreciative that they, they came out here. Um, and they they will, like I said, make make some noise in their conference this year. Lou, you talked a little bit about you you have some girls based on your starting lineup who are going to have to take significantly larger roles, and you kind of knew about Rachel and. We saw Abby out there. Will you talk a little bit about their play specifically today? I mean, if but, nothing else, they've taken a step forward from last year. Well, I hope so. I told, told the team beforehand, I'm, I'm a big believer in you can go three ways. You can go backwards, you can go forwards, or you can stay the same. So I need, I need everybody on this team to move forward uh, and get better. I need our staff to get, get better e each day and not stay the same and not go backwards. But when you lose 60 to 65% of your scoring, to graduation and you lose 60 to 65 percent of your rebounding to graduation somebody's got to step up so uh, if not we're not rebounding very well and then we're not scoring very well so uh, hopefully that can get taken care of by who's all on the floor now how effectively at this point in time of the season is yet to be determined but i want to get better e each day and like i said we got better the last two days of practice, and I got the effort that we needed to get tonight from this team. Was there a particular phase in the game that you were especially pleased with tonight? I thought we were really unselfish. Uh, anytime you have 19 assists on 29 field goals, um, I'm always pleased with my favorite statistic is I want to attempt, I want to make more than they attempt. And we were 20 of 26, and they were one of three. I thought that was a big difference in the game. And uh, it's funny, I get asked all the time, how much do you shoot free throws? And I, they can come in on their own and shoot free throws. We, I don't spend a lot of time in practice doing that. Um, but this, this is a team that we just expect them to make, make some foul shots. And they, they did tonight. I thought that was big. Um, I wanted to challenge a couple of them in particular, some that missed some open shots early on when they got the first touch or second touch on the perimeter. and Because um, I expect them to make, make open shots because they do that in, in practice and they had some open looks today. And um, I've told a couple of them that I've set the bar intentionally high for them in my head and I want them to achieve it. But we, we had a lot of um, missed shots, but then those kids took the open shot when they got the ball again, as opposed to passing it up. And when you have a young team, uh, we struggled with that earlier in the season where you shoot, miss it, you get it again, you're open, and then you don't shoot. 
that's a problem. So uh, they've all been told through the recruiting process that, uh, and I've learned this um, throughout my years here at Bowling Green, but you, you gotta shoot before while you're open. If not, the way we've been playing, we can turn it over if we don't take the open shot. So um, we really wanted to emphasize that, and I, I thought our kids did a better job of, of today, and especially if they shot, missed it, and got it again, they continue to shoot the ball. And you, you saw that with Haley, she puck in particular, she missed her first couple shots. And then finally she, she calmed down a little bit and exhaled, as they called it, and then kept shooting the ball. And I think she's a fantastic shooter. Uh, we're fortunate to have her be a part of our program. Were you comfortable with the 29-3 attempts? Well, considering how much zone they played, and um, ironically, we only, we only have a handful of zone offenses in, and we've put in a couple more um, this week against, because we anticipated them playing a 3-2 instead of a 2-3. And so the zone offenses that I put in the, in particular this week for that don't work against a 2-3. So we had to draw a couple things out of timeouts. Uh, I thought we, we did that for the first time in a, in a, a couple days and were able to, to execute. But uh, we, we've got a lot in, but we've got a laundry list still of stuff to put in. In the one for 16 against for their three point shooting, I would assume, knowing aren't they pretty much a very active three point shooting team? They're extremely talented yeah. three point shooting team. I, I was shocked. I honestly thought, look, from what I remember of the game, I thought they made more than just that that one. They, I mean, they were making. They had some good good looks that that didn't fall. I mean, everybody saw in warm ups. Uh, uh, Wood at number number five. I mean, she was just going around the horn and making NBA threes. She was, unfortunately, I was going to hit a nerve with Cavs in, but she was looking like Gordon Haywood out, out there. I mean, all in warm-ups. I mean, I, I had to go take my tums early watching that kid, and we were fortunate to, to hold her um, to, tonight uh, to 0 of 5 from the arc. But that's a, she's a very talented shooter, and they've got a couple other kids who can really shoot it from the arc. But uh, they, they've had a long, long week, been on the road, um, got in late last night, but uh, we really wanted to take make them shoot twos make twos as opposed to threes. And can you just talk a little bit about the, the way your freshmen as a group play? <laughs> like I tell everybody, the older I get, the younger they get. But we, we rolled the dice and threw them out there a lot together uh, to see how they could do. Threw them out there, some with some young ones, some with some old ones. That We really mixed up some different combinations, trying a lot of different things right now. Um, and, and seeing kind of what sticks on, on the wall with who, who's kind of playing well with each other. But it's a, it's a group, they've got a lot to learn, uh, but do I, it would be unfair if I compared them to potentially a, a senior who graduated who has been in this program for four years when I was talking to an assistant coach earlier today and really we've played less than nine weeks together. And really nine weeks together when you break that down to hours and you know, it's two hours a week in the summertime, really eight, 20 hours overall, and you know, 20 hours over the past couple of weeks. It's just, we're dealing with hours of playing together as opposed to years. And that's once we start playing longer together, I think that growth will come, but it's gonna be a inchworm process, in my opinion, right now. But overall, uh, they had nerves, <laughs> like everybody, like the coaching staff did as well, like I did, uh, but, I, but I thought they stepped up and, and played com composed uh, under the bright lights and in, in, in new uniforms and newcomers today. So you didn't open up the second half um, like you wanted to. Uh, obviously, I mean, they went out a little bit of a run, but then Eric had seemed to kind of take things over into her own hands. How much, how important is it going to be for her or one of the other upperclassmen to kind of take things into their own hands when things maybe aren't going right? It's going to fall on somebody's shoulders. <laughs> if, uh, if she doesn't assume that responsibility, then someone else has got, got to step up. But I believe she's ready, ready for that. I mean, she's our leading returning scorer from, from last year, and she can. But three points in eight minutes isn't going to cut it, no matter who you play. And I called two quick timeouts, and uh, we, we talked about offensive efficiency and how we were lacking in that early on. And now, is that because of them or is that because of us? And I, it was definitely both, but we, we need to play better in, in that stretch. But yeah, if Eric, 
I, I enjoy this team because I think they can all score at different times and they all have different strengths and weaknesses. But yeah, other, somebody's going to have to step up and, and contribute faster than what we did in that stretch where we only had three points in eight minutes. Um, Coach, one thing you always talk that you, you talk about frequently is trying to find this team's identity. Do you think you came any closer to that today? Yes, I thought we did. I thought we got some emotion out of some kids that we haven't seen in practice. Uh, I thought they were engaged on, on the bench, no matter who was on the floor or who was on, on the bench, and that that's important to me. It, it's it's going to take all, all 12 kids and, and all five coaches to, to make this work the, this year. And everybody's got to give on every play. And uh, we have certain mantras in practice. I mean, talk to be heard, you know, give more than you receive. I mean, it's we've really got to be supportive and turn uh, our youth into a strength, as I always say. But we've got to turn our intangibles into tangible strengths as well. And I think bringing that emotion and being supportive of each other are two intangibles that will have to provide a strength for us as well. What do you say to the kids, Coach, after a big win like this against a team that uh, you know, may be a little uh, less talented, some you're going to face certainly later in the season, like the next game? When you take well, we, we called a couple of timeouts early on, and I, I made sure they understood that I wasn't happy with how they were performing at either end of the floor. But we, we talked at the end of the huddle. We've been going for several days. So they, they've earned two days off. Uh, so they got more of a mom speech at that huddle than anything else uh, to try and relax physically and rest mentally as well. Um, go lay on a couch a little bit, prop your feet up. Yeah, you can get into the gym uh, when, on late Sunday or get into the gym when we come back on Monday, but take a couple days and, and rest your body and, and be smart. Uh, got a, our family, families have a great following. We've got some that are gonna go, uh, came in town, and gonna spend their, the whole weekend with their family, and that's great, uh, but I need them to, to rest a couple days because now uh, we will start an, a, an aggressive prep on, on Monday against a very talented butt male team uh, that's got a chance to, to win that Patriot League, so we've gotta be ready. You have a challenge with as many young kids on the team and for a big win like this, and they think it will be like that every time. They won't think that. You know, film, film does not lie, so they won't think that. So we'll have a lot of learning opportunities from film come Monday. Anything else for Coach?